Hello and welcome. I am Scrapperlock and this is City of Heroes on the Homecoming server. And I am back to playing this game. It's been over a year and I will explain a little bit about that as we get going. Um, but what I have done is I renamed the original Liberty Lass that I had on here which is modeled after the original Liberty Lass I played in 2004, who was an invulnerability uh, super strength tanker. <clears throat> I've tried so hard to make a character like that work, but I frankly don't like the way super strength works in City of Heroes. It feels weak. Not weak in damage, but just weak, like you're not actually punching things and hitting them hard. And I've wanted to try energy melee for a long time, so I decided to give this character energy melee and willpower, and instead of a tank, I've made her a brute. Because although Liberty Lass isn't brutish, right, as a character, um, I like the mechanics of, of the brutes, and it's a much more aggressive tanker. It's sort of like a scranker, as they used to call it, half scrapper, half tanker. And this is one of the characters I'll be playing, although I think I'm going to try a Sentinel and some other ones, so we'll see. Um, I'll maybe upload multiple videos we'll see what happens but this is going to be a playthrough of the brute she's level one we're in the outbreak tutorial <clears throat> need 106 xp to get to level two i always wonder why 106 why not exactly 100 this has been that's been around since launch i think and i don't know why or maybe it maybe it was 100 at launch and they changed it to 106 after one of the updates i don't really know so uh, I, I saved the character of the of the costume of the original character, loaded it onto this one. It's the same basic origin. She is like a super patriot, and we are in the outbreak tutorial, and all we have is a punch and then a passive power, which is high pain tolerance. Um, I do let me pause it here, and I'm going to put up our stats, and then I'll bring you back. All right, so we're back. I do want to point out it may take me a little while to get the sound the audio right it seems like the settings have re restored have sort of whatever you want to call it restored themselves from the original settings that i had the last time i played but i'm not 100 percent on that and it might be the old homecoming settings instead of the rebirth settings that i had for a couple of years which included changes of equipment and all of that so uh, we'll just have to see what happens but we've got our stats up here and so we will monitor those and um, otherwise, yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, play the game. And I think this will be a lot of fun. So I'm not going to read the text. We've been through this tutorial a lot of times. If you want to get like an actual tutorial on how to play the tutorial, please see the original from a couple of years ago, or actually three or four years ago now, uh, um, Silver Phoenix playthrough. Um, by the way, I have access to that character now. One of the nice things about the Homecoming server is they do have the veteran levels, so we don't have to stop at level 50. We can keep playing this character as long as we want. Our movement power will be flight because that is standard for Liberty Lass whenever I play her. I always think of her as a flying character. We'll get probably all of our primary and secondary powers. And one of the things we'll be able to do on this server is get some of these hybrid abilities. So you can see how that works, and honestly, I'm... I was looking over Silver Phoenixes, and I don't remember how that works. So I'm going to have to look that up or see if I can get some help on that. Um, so we'll start at first level. We'll go to at least 50th and, and hopefully beyond with this character. I should uh, enjoy her quite a bit because I do like um, Brutes and Scrappers. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, so, why am I back on Homecoming? Why am I playing City of Heroes again? Why did I stop playing City of Heroes? Uh, so let me explain some of that as we go. Um, as you guys know, back in 2019, when um, this game came to the Homecoming sort of bootleg servers, as I call it, it was, in fact, the case that we really shouldn't, you know, nobody really should have been playing it. They, We didn't have the right to to have access to this thing, right? And in a very real sense, uh, it's sort of like pirating. Uh, I personally didn't pirate the code, right? Because it was sitting on somebody's server, but and, uh, but I, and I was logging into it, but still um, I pirated essentially the client or got the client from somebody who pirated it. 
And, um, yeah, there's lots of people who debate the morality of being on these bootleg servers. It's, it's pretty clear you are in very legally questionable grounds, if not outright stealing. I ignored that because it's the sort of thing that nobody um, really bothers you about, and if anybody was going to get into trouble for this thing, it wouldn't have been likely me. It would have likely been the people running the servers. I played on Homecoming for a while. I did the Silver Phoenix and the original Liberty Last playthroughs. And then Homecoming put out a notification saying that uh, you weren't allowed to record video on their servers. So I said, all right, if that's the way it's going to be, I'll switch. And I switched to the Rebirth server and I actually liked the Rebirth server a lot because it didn't have originally a lot of modifications. It was mostly playing the way City of Heroes was when the game uh, was taken offline, right? Whereas the Homecoming guys had made a whole bunch of changes and modifications and were continuing to do so. Uh, so I liked that it was more vanilla. I uh, also liked the fact that the guys running it were... Um, it was a smaller group. They weren't, frankly, as obnoxious as the people running Homecoming. And, uh, you know, they didn't mind if you recorded video and posted it. So I then um, did a whole bunch of playthroughs, including Let's Rants and stuff, on the Rebirth server. I always managed to, you know, introduce it as not just this is City of Heroes, but City of Heroes on the Rebirth server. And I basically washed my hands of Homecoming. If you watch the Rebirth playthroughs, there's one of them, and I can't remember which episode now, where I actually talk about the fact that the guys from Homecoming claimed to be in negotiations with NCSoft to try and get permission from them, to get like a license from them to run the game. And I said, it's never going to happen. Never in a million years is NCSoft going to let them take this bootleg server and make it official. Well, as of January 4th, I am proven wrong because it has been officially sanctioned by or licensed, I guess, by the guys at NCSoft for the homecoming folks to run this server and for us to play on it. So this is now sort of legally okay. Additionally, about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, the guys at homecoming said you can go ahead and post video. Maybe this had to do with the negotiations, right? The claim that they made about the video was that it was unclear whether it would violate, you know, the terms that they were negotiating under, right? And one of the things I said was, yeah, this is a joke. They're never going to get the um, permission from NCSoft, so them banning the videos doesn't make sense. Whether or not that had anything to actually do with it, who knows? Um, I continued to play on the Rebirth server for a long time before, you know, the this permission was granted um, but last year I having a conversation with actually with my students about integrity and about how you know doing the right thing doesn't only happen when people are watching and in fact Oprah Winfrey I think defined integrity as what you do when nobody's watching and I thought about it I think I had just been playing this game right right before we had this conversation, and I thought about it, and I said, you know, um, really, given that we know that this is not a legally sanctioned server, I really shouldn't be playing on it, and I stopped. That's why I stopped playing City of Heroes and making Let's Rants, and I switched to American Truck Simulator, and so on and so forth. And I haven't played City of Heroes since. But it's now allowed. You can see there are a whole bunch of people here. I think some of them have come in since it's been allowed. There are people who, as I was doing back last year, were saying, well, I don't think I want to do this if, uh, you know, if it's not ethical to do. And yeah, I did it for three years or something before having that epiphany. Um, but 
uh, I don't have to worry about it anymore because it is now sanctioned. It's now allowed. You can now um, play on the server without there being any ethical quandary at all. Now, I know it seems sort of hypocritical. Well, I played and recorded videos for years. Rebirth is still out there. Um, I could play on the Rebirth server if I wanted to. But I've come back to Homecoming because that is the one that has been officially sanctioned by NCSoft. And now I don't have to sort of feel guilty about playing on a bootleg server. And instead, I can just play to my heart's content. And you guys can, if you want, come along for the ride. So this is City of Heroes on the Homecoming server with all of their mods and updates, many of which I'm not super familiar with. Um, and we will be playing Liberty Lass, who's an energy melee character. So one of the things, one of the reasons I like energy melee is because I do like the visual effects of it. And one of the things I did when I created the character and went into the uh, power designer and all of her powers are going to be red, white, or blue. You know, some powers are red, some are white. Most are either red or blue. There are a couple of white ones. The white ones are really bright. Uh, or at least they look that way in the interface. We'll see how it goes. I may tweak it. Um, and she's got a couple of costumes. I don't know if I can use them yet. Hang on. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, look, it doesn't look like I can... I don't know. I'll have to go into the into icon and check it. But I have the blue version of her costume where her shirt is blue and her cape is red. And I also have a capeless version that I call Liberty Last Spiffy. <laughs> it looks kind of cool and modern rather than this classical look. So we are going to attack some skulls to battle the skulls. And uh, hey, there's some guys here that we can fight too. Let's check out our new power. So this is the original two hits. And then this one, one hit. So both of these, I guess, are red powers. I can't remember. I, I alternated like which ones were red and which ones were blue. We received our first tip. That's early to get a tip. Um, I'll be getting, as I said, I'll be getting the flying power um, fairly quickly. Probably at sixth level. Just so, Just to move more quickly around the city. And not get stuck like that. Oh, you know, interestingly... Hang on, let's look at her powers. You know, one of the things that they did do in... Um, Rebirth that I bet they don't do in... Homecoming is you automatically get slots on health and stamina as you level up. I'm going to have to look that up or see if I can ask somebody. Or if anybody knows, go ahead and post in the comments. Each server has its own little different tweaks. So one of the tweaks about um, Homecoming is once you've got your SOs in, you can just upgrade them without having to go to a shop. Uh, another tweak is that I think the um, the sets are a little more available here and less expensive than they were on Rebirth, so it's easier to get sets. Um, on the other hand, uh, and by that I mean not sets, but the like the archetype sets, Right. Um, uh, on the other hand, the uh, uh, you know, like there's been tweaks to the powers. Like super reflexes is different now on rebirth than it is on homecoming. So you don't like e e um, evasion or elude or, or is different uh, elude, I guess. Um, yeah. So it's going to take me a while to figure out the differences. It's still City of Heroes at at its core, so. Always happy about that and always enjoy playing it. So there's a patrol here. We're going to let them walk by so that we don't aggro them. It's maybe not super necessary at this stage because we're only level 2 and so are they. But we're also only level 2 and you can see we only have 5% defense or resistance rather. So, um, and these guys are yellow to us. However, that also gives us some good XP. Um, it looks like the... Um, the recharge rate on these guys isn't too bad. So we'll have to just see. I have not played an energy melee before. And so I'm just going to have to see how it how it plays and how the recharge works as we go through 
getting the first sets of powers. We won't need endurance yet. Got to keep an eye on that health bar. I have I haven't been watching it at all. I'm just so used to brutes and scrappers being able to kick so much butt, especially at the early levels. You can keep you can keep an eye up here. The la the bottom one is the last hit chance. That's the last chance I had to hit. You can see we have an eighty nine percent chance. You have to remember too that at the lower levels you do get a um, sort of a generic boost to your two hit abilities. Here's your chance to hit, and it slowly goes down as you get till tenth level, I think. And so the base to hit in City of Heroes for the player characters is 75%, for the NPCs is 50%, and the base to hit um, is a little bit higher at first level, and then it slowly drops. So let, let's take a look at fir against a first level enemy. Looks like it's 79, 89%, right? It's second level, right? I think it was not, I think it's like 90 against even level cons at first level, and then it slowly drops. You can see that it will be lower against yellow cons, right? 79%, right? Because they're a level above you. So you have about a 10%. It's like minus 10% to hit per level above you that you're fighting against. So when you want to take on higher level enemies, one of the things you need to do is increase your two hit chances by enhancing your power for two hit or getting yourself some kind of a, a buff or getting a, a boost power like... Um, Focus Chi for martial arts. Because if you keep, if you think about it, right, it's minus 10% to hit per level, it looks like. Um, now, this was 89 and he was a yellow con. That's because it was an even level lieutenant. So, lieutenants, absent some sort of a defense power, don't have, don't penalize your two hit. So, it's not the con, it's the level. But if we're talking about fighting minions, even level minions, you have a certain percent chance to hit. And then it's about minus 10% per level above you. So if you're fighting plus one minions who would be yellow to you, you have a base of 65% once the level, the low level boost is gone. To fight oranges, you'd have 55. To fight reds, you'd have a 45. And to fight purples, you'd have a 35% chance to hit. So purples are very hard to hit. So if you're fighting plus fours and you're going after purples at high level, you need some kind of a boost to your two hit, or you're going to be whiffing all the time. I think I'm correct about the percentages, but we'll keep an eye up here and see over time how it plays out. It's, it's hard to tell now because so much of the um, percentage is being affected by just the fact that we're a different level, that, that we get this level boost at the low levels. So we should have a higher chance to hit these guys. You had 95, we're capped. So it's 99, but you're capped at 95. We've completed the mission. We've hit level 3. Remember, at the odd levels, you get enhancement slots. And at the even levels, you get um, new powers. And I definitely need to look up whether um, I need to put those slots on, uh, on health and stamina. Because I don't want to put them on and then find out that I don't need them. Although, I think you can respec fairly easily in this on this server i hate respecking mostly because all the enhancements drop out of your slots and then you got to put them all back in and you know it's one thing if you wanted to move a bunch of the enhancements around or or get rid of those enhancements and put new ones in but when the enhancements are mostly where you want them is this the guy where we yeah when the enhancements are mostly where you want them Just making sure we do prefer to fight bosses. Okay. Um, and you're just moving like... I remember with my Scrapper, I had put a slot on combat jumping like a moron when, when the game first started. And then I, I hated that slot. It was it was one slot. It wasn't... I didn't want it there. I was really annoyed. And uh, finally, when you could do a respec, I respec... I did the whole respec mission and everything all for one thing, just to move that one slot. And I had all my other enhancements where I wanted them, and I had to reinstall all of them just to move that one slot out of the way. 
All right, so we get two slots. And I think we're going to just do what, what I always do, which is even slotting. No enhancements yet. There's no, not really any need for them. Um, let's see, what do we got here? These are... Why are we getting... Oh, my, that's right. They got rid of training enhancements now because people didn't like them and don't use them. And so now they actually give you DOs at this level, which is frankly insane. I'm not going to bother slotting anything in because at this point you level up so fast that it's, you're just going to have to take it out. So let's sell these and I'm just going to sell them here. We're going to probably have a sick amount of influence because of this. Um, and then we can't sell these so we will just delete them. Yeah, I don't like all this free stuff. Um, and yeah, we'll uh, gain the DOs later as we go. We'll just slot in what we find. I'm not going to bother to um, buy DOs at this level. I'm curious, do these guys sell them now? Or do they still sell TOs? Nope, they only sell D DOs. So we can get level 5 DOs and stuff like that now, and I'm not going to bother with it. Right? At low level, you don't need it, as you saw. There's really no point. So we will just go back to our contact. And hopefully she'll give us her phone number. And uh, let's see, how much time have we do got here done? 21 minutes. So let's do one more mission. Costume contest taking place in Echo Plaza. On Torchbearer or Indomitable. We're not on Torchbearer or Indomitable. We're on the Everlasting server. See so yeah, if anybody wants to make up a character and say hi, um, I'm on the Everlasting server. I may be playing some Silver Phoenix. Um, I probably won't record any of that. Go away. I probably won't record any of that just because... Um, you guys have already seen Silver Phoenix and she's already level 50. Next mission. Go speak to Lawrence Mansfield. So there's a little bit of running around in the low levels. And as I've explained before when we play this game, um, well, let me get the badge over here. Uh, as I've explained before playing this game, when you uh, first start it, if you're a new player, they want you to run all over the place because they want you to learn the zone. And they want you to learn how to maneuver and stuff like that. And this is this one of the safest places to run around because the villains cap out at level 6. And except for, well, except for one or two other places. What did we just get? Hero core. Uh, except for one or two places where they've added the new crap, which is where Arachnos is and everything, and over here by Argosy Industrial. Except for those areas that are a little ridiculous for low-level characters until you get to 5th or 6th level. There's very little really in Atlas Park that can threaten you, especially once you're 3rd or 4th level, which you get to very quickly, as you saw. You know, we're already 3rd level. We're Probably hit fourth level in this mission, I would guess. And at that point, I will stop. And well, I'll stop at the end of this mission either way. Um, but yeah, one of the reasons I don't want to buy enhancements is just because of how quickly you fly through the levels. Right, as you could see, if you slotted in the level two enhancements, you know, after 45 minutes, they're already um, obsolete. Oh, yeah, the server's having problems. You see these? Did you see those guys fade out? I wonder if it's being overloaded now that it's, you know, quote-unquote back or legal or whatever you want to call it. Everybody's like me. And um, Did somebody just... I guess somebody just gave me an adrenaline boost? Oh, yeah. All right, so one of the other players gave... Yeah, level 45. It always frustrates me when players do this. Um, I know they think they're being nice or whatever, but... One of the things that I'm always evaluating as I play the character is its effectiveness. And while this thing is running, it's going to be very, very difficult for me to gauge and calibrate the effectiveness of my powers, right? Of how fast they recharge and how accurately they hit and things like that. So, yeah, it doesn't really, like, I don't need it. It doesn't really help me. And all it does is make it harder for me to um, estimate how my character is is doing and, and what whether it's effective or not 
So now we're fighting the... Is it the council? Used to be the fifth column. You guys know that story, so I won't tell it again. So yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this playthrough. I am, like, super happy to be playing City of Heroes again. I really missed it a lot. Um, American Truck Simulator is a fun game, but it's uh, nothing is a substitute for City of Heroes. This is by far my favorite computer game ever. I really enjoy it. And... Yeah, I was playing Starfield for a while. Yeah, Starfield's fine, but I like this game way better. <laughs> There's just something about the way the controls work that's so comfortable for me and just so second nature. I'm, I'm just... It's just so intuitive to me. It seems exactly the way a game should play. And most of the other games, there's there are various features to them that I find uncomfortable or unpleasant or whatever. Um, all right, let's organize these. Uh, oops, these inspirations. There we go. We don't need that one. All right. So we need to locate Dante O'Malley. Is there a hostage over here? Nope. Just three guys. It's going to be interesting to see what, if any, changes they've made to just missions and things like that on this server. One thing I did do like on the server is... Um, they definitely tell you when you're on a story, not just when you're on a story arc, but like the parts, part one, part two, part three, which the original game didn't do and which Rebirth didn't do because, you know, it wasn't in the original game. So um, when you get on story arcs, it, it gives you different parts and it names the missions part one and two and three. And I do like that. Some of them do that in... Uh, on Rebirth, but not all of them. Alright, well, we're going to beat these guys up. Liberty Lass is certainly not going to leave them unarrested. 100% for sure, Liberty Lass never kills, so these guys are always being arrested, never being killed. So one thing we're going to have to work on, and what I'm going to be thinking about is... Um, energy Melee does a lot of stunning and or disorienting. So I'm going to have to think about whether I want to actually enhance for that or not. We'll see. I believe the disorient enhancements are for duration, not probability. I could be wrong about that, but I think that is in fact correct. And the problem with that is that a lot of times what I want is a higher probability, not a longer duration. Right? I want to have a better chance of stunning you, not make you stunned longer. Yours is holding up just fine. So even though willpower is more resistance based, one of the things I learned um, on the last resistance based character I had was you still want to enhance for def you still want to have carry defense inspirations, not resistance inspirations, um, because you just get pounded. If you're if you need the inspiration, you're going to get pounded. Um, and hit a lot, and the resistance is just not enough. You really want to make them miss. And, of course, you do have the issue that um, when you're making them miss, they're also missing their uh, secondary effects of their powers, like stuns and stuff. And they don't hit with a stun power, it can't stun you. Looks like everybody, so let's head on out. And I guess we're not going to get to 4th level unless I can take a few guys out as we go. And that's enough. Oh wait, we have another mission directly here. Let's go ahead and do it since that was so quick. You know, the server is called Homecoming and not so much for the server itself, but just for City of Heroes. This feels like a bit of a homecoming for me since um, I have not played the game since... Uh, I don't know, February or January of 2023. It's now mid-January of 2024. 
I have a birthday coming up, and I feel like this was a an early birthday present. That the server is now sanctioned by NCSoft, so I don't have to feel guilty about playing it. They did so much right with this game. One of the things I think that they did right was they were always very um, careful in all all aspects of their design to make it so that the original City of Heroes to make it so that you could very clearly see everything that's going on on screen. And one of the things that frustrates me, we've got our first salvage, that's early too. Usually it doesn't happen until level 4 or 5. Um, one of the things that frustrates, frustrates me in a lot of computer games is that in order to make it seem more realistic, and there's our level up, in order to make it seem more realistic, they will frequently make it so that things are hard to see. And the problem with that is then you can't see. You need to be able to see what you're doing to play a video game. I don't care how realistic it is. I've got to be able to see what's going on. Uh, City of Heroes sort of lost the plot a little bit with that when City of Villains came out. All of those weird Arachnos lairs and some of the other maps in City of Villains did in fact make it very difficult to see what was going on. And again, it was all... For, well, part of it was for atmosphere. I think part of it was to save on um, the pressure on the graphics card. Obviously, that's no longer an issue for City of Heroes... Um, even a potato computer of today should be able to run this game simply because um, it just what was high-end resources for 2005 or 6 is just trivial to computers of today right I mean literally a cell phone could run this if you programmed it right you could easily run something like this I don't know how you'd use the controls because they're not meant for that but it certainly would be powerful enough to run the graphics and it would be smooth as silk so yeah it's really funny they have a, a thing about the system requirements and um you know that you quote unquote you might not be able to run the game if you don't have a strong enough system and i'm like what system in 2024 would not be able to run this game that com that even mid-range computers in 2020 in, in 2004 20 years ago could run by the way, one of the reasons I'm actually pretty psyched that we're playing this game again now and that I'm that I'm playing this game is that in April of this year, we're going to hit the 20th anniversary of City of Heroes. Because COH came out in April of 2004. Hard to believe it's been 20 years since I, I, I gave a, a talk at uh, a university in Canada when I was living in Seattle and I drove back to Seattle on a launch day. Now I had played it in beta, but I drove back to Seattle on launch day. I think it was, I, I want to say, don't quote me. It was, I think it was April 29th. It was a Tuesday. And, um, I think I drove back on launch day and on the way home, I did not go to work. I should have, right. I was coming back and I left in the morning and I should have, uh, I should have, you know, dumped my stuff at my apartment and driven into work and, like, worked the second half of the day. There's really no reason not to, except I wanted to play City of Heroes. So I drove home, stopped at the mall near my house, went into the video store, picked up a copy of City of Heroes from the shelf, uh, got home, Installed it while I was unpacking, and at like 1, 2 in the afternoon, instead of being at work, I was playing City of Heroes on launch day. And it was really fun. A bunch of my other friends, like, took the day off work or whatever, or, you know, called in sick, or I don't know, maybe they didn't work in the, during the day, or, you know, they were in different time zones. But yeah, it was really, really fun, and I had a lot, I really enjoyed it. But can we call her yet? Yeah, we can. So let's go ahead. All right. So we've got that. Let's take the next mission. Oh, 
Now let's talk to the Atlas Security Chief just because you, you kind of have to. It's part of the, the tutorial, and if you don't, it'll bug you about it. And let's ask Ms. Liberty here for our new power. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get flight. There we go. And now we can fly anywhere we want to. So here is... There's a badge up here. You guys have seen me get this before. Right there. And then there's a badge right here. And I think that's where we will park. park. Liberty Lass for now. Right under the American flag. We've got our badges. And we've hit fourth level. And we have played our first episode in a very long time of City of Heroes on the Homecoming server. And I'll see you guys next time. I am Scrapperlock, and this has been City of Heroes.